sensational Terry Taylor and killer Tim Brooks. Now, Tim Brooks is a man with that long hair and beard, and he is managed by the man who just illegally stepped in the ring. That's manager Gary Hart, who needs little introduction to most Houston wrestling fans. They are well aware of Gary Hart, not only as an individual, but his reputation. And then you see referee Tommy Gilbert warning Hart to stay outside the ring. Caught in this side in the head scissors is Taylor, who early in the match had everything going his way. Sensational Terry Taylor. And he is one of the best in professional wrestling today. Terry Taylor has got to be one of the big favorites to win the Battle Royal, the Two Ring Battle Royal, the biggest Two Ring Battle Royal in Houston wrestling history. 25 men battling for $25,000, and that takes place this Sunday night. If you're watching Saturday night, that's tomorrow night. If you're watching Sunday morning, that's tonight at 7 at the Coliseum of Houston Wrestling. And you just saw, Gary, uh, saw Terry Taylor make that switch, that side headlock, but killer Tim Brooks using Taylor's long blonde hair jerked the popular star back into that head scissors. Now, Terry Taylor is a former North American Heavyweight Champion, also a former Mid-South TV Champion. He has gone the last 14 months on the East Coast doing terrifically against the top competition. He has returned to the Mid-South and Houston Wrestling area, and we are glad he has, and we celebrate his return along with thousands of his Terry Taylor's wrestling fans and army, if you will. that they be out in force Sunday night at the Coliseum, I'm sure, because Terry Taylor has a tough matchup against Dick Slater, and that, is, that will take place before the two ring battle royal. So 25 men will see action that see him. Right then, Killer Brooks saw the knee of Terry Taylor, and he's still feeling the effects of that. As Terry Taylor now starting to do what he does best as he opens up his style, but Killer Tim Brooks quickly closed it. And as Tim Brooks lowers the boot to Taylor, Taylor's fans and their strong in number know that Terry Taylor's got what takes a bounce back. And that's Gary Hart choking him with that towel. And that's the Gary Hart we've known through the years. He hasn't changed a bit. He may not have the hair that he once had, but he hasn't changed in his manners at ringside if he has any manners whatsoever. But Taylor has that ability to come back. He takes a lot of punishment, including that ring post being introduced to his face by Gary Hart. And a good shot of Taylor down on the concrete Coliseum floor. Also want to remind you that there'll be 10 bouts in that huge card, including Terry Taylor up against Dick Slater. Taylor rolls back into the ring, and as he does, killer Tim Brooks, as tough as they come, goes right back to work on Taylor. And as Brooks now slaps on that step over arm bar, a hold that was made famous by Johnny Valentine and a few wrestlers before Valentine's time, but Houston wrestling fans will mostly relate that type of hold to the blonde bomb of Johnny Valentine, and he knew exactly how to apply it. It's a hold that wears down your opponent, punishes your opponent, and that's the type style that Killer Brooks has. Much like Valentine, he's going to try to wear down Terry Taylor. But like I've mentioned before, a lot of wrestlers have tried that tactic and they have failed because Taylor is in great and has that tremendous ability to explode right back into action. I'd like to encourage you to stay tuned the next two hours right here on Channel 39. Plenty of wrestling action, including you're going to see that showdown between Ted DiBiase and Dick Murdoch, that wild, savage struggle. You're also going to see a tremendous tag team battle between the Guerreros and the Fabulous Ones. And when you watch those two matches, you're going to see why promoter Paul Bosch has signed them in return matches that are going to be on that tremendous two-ring battle royal night at the Coliseum. And Brooks again took full advantage of Gilbert, paying attention to Gary Hart, used the hair of Terry Taylor to bring him back to the mat. And you see the killer denying all allegations being fired at him by the referee. Go, 
Brooks keeping the pressure on. You notice that he's pulling back on the fingers. As long as he pulls back on all four fingers and keeps the pressure on, he's going to be able to keep it a legal hold. If he starts to pull back on just one or two fingers, the referee has the authority to call for the break. So you can start seeing the chant by the wrestling fans as they start to chant on Terry, Terry. And they're also chanting Baldy, Baldy. And that chant is being directed at manager Gary Hart. Tail off on his feet and he drives a few well-placed rights to the side to the bearded face of Brooks. And as Terry looks for a place to throw him, he finds it and sends him airborne. And beautiful way Taylor caught Brooks coming off those ropes, using his momentum to the big man down. And a give and take, and this is where Terry Taylor shocks a lot of wrestlers because just by his appearance, it doesn't look like he can give and take, but he sure can, and in that particular situation, he was beating Brooks. He's got the killer wrapped up. We've got Taylor on top. We've got one, we've got two, and that's all we have as Gary Hart has now made the mistake of interfering in the match. Taylor takes full advantage of the mistake by Brooks, and Terry Taylor wins this match over killer Tim Brooks and manager Gary Hart. And Terry Taylor is one of 25 superstars who has his goal set on the two-ring battle royal, $25,000 prize money. That's going to be at the Coliseum this Sunday night. Don't miss it. Don't miss Terry Taylor in action. We'll be back in just one moment. Well, that's right. The stakes are so high. There'll be 22 of the top wrestlers there is in the world today. Two rings, triple chance. This night in professional wrestling, it's the biggest event of the year, and it's right here in Houston, and I'm just excited to be a part of it. Because $25,000 is a lot of money. I mean, there's a lot of things that I could use that money for. There's going to be a lot of guys doing anything they can to hang on to it and get that money. But I'm just telling everybody right here in Houston, I'm going to give it my best shot, and hopefully I will come out on top. Thank you. Don't miss Terry Taylor and the two-ring battle royal this Sunday night at the Coliseum. 1986 ring battle royal. $25,000. You want to take a good look at this, huh? Take a good look at this. Take a good look at this. A $25,000 dress gonna look mighty nice on you, baby. I'm gonna tell you something right now. You should take how it looks right now. Me and Judy own you. Two ring battle roll. A lot of bodies, a lot of money, and a very dangerous type match. And you know some Judy, you're gonna look so sweet. She's gonna look so sweet with a $25,000 dress on. All these people out here know that Dick Slater has got the best chance out of all of them to win the Battle Royal. Sunday, January the 5th, the start of 19... Wrestling, I'm Jim Ross, along with Joel Watts. We'll be describing the action here at the Tulsa Fairgrounds, purveying a tremendous wrestling lineup for you here this evening. Joel, our television tournament is in full swing, and we have some great pairings here this evening. We have our quarterfinal bouts. We have Steve Dr. Death Williams against Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. We'll also see Jake the Snake Roberts against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. We'll see Hacksaw Butch Reed in action against Mike Scott. And we'll have Pork Chops Cash and Mad Dog Boy the Bruise Brothers going against the Nightmare General Eddie Gilbert in tag team competition. Also, we'll see Humongous in action, Al Perez and Ricky Gibson in tag team competition. And I want to add, ladies and gentlemen, that that tag team matchup with the Bruise Brothers and Nightmare and Eddie Gilbert is for the Mid-South tag team titles. You're going to see it right here on television. Let's don't waste any more time and go to the ring. Here's ring announcer Mike Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Mid-South Television Title Tournament, quarterfinal round number 11. One fall or television time remaining. Introducing, first of all, from Tampa, Florida, weighing 237 pounds, Dick Slater. Also in his corner, Dark Journey. And from Oklahoma University, weighing 266 pounds, Steve Dr. Death Williams. The television tournament in full swing. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for being with us on Mid-South Wrestling. The bell has sounded, and we have two supreme athletes in the ring, Joel, Steve Dr. Death Williams, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater, and the television tournament, the single elimination tournament, and it's on the line right here. 
Dr. Death is still in the tournament. He and Buzz Sawyer both uh, were just continued on after they both were counted out of the ring in last week's match. Dr. Death reverses. He gets a body slam on Nick Slater. Listen to this crowd. Dr. Death flexing a bit. I tell you something, Dr. Death has got to watch his confidence in this match because he is up against a veteran. And Dark Journey has become a point of contention that you have to remember at all times. Listen to these people chanting, oh you, oh you. The Oklahoma Sooners on their way to the Orange Bowl. This crowd here at the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion in full swing, Dr. Death, Steve Williams reversing. Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. Doc pulls him up and clamps down on that arm bar. Carl Fergie, third man in the ring. Dr. Death has had, had to be put in a position where he has to wrestle many more single matches after Ted DiBiase's injury. DiBiase back in the Mid-South area. It's great to have him back. He and Dr. Death, I imagine, will be gearing up for tag team battles in the near future. They are a fantastic tag team combination. Dr. Death getting out of the way of that elbow. Dick Slater does the same. Both men back up and poised. These are a couple of tough, rugged individuals. Dick Slater, man who can knock it right out of your boots with that right hand. Dr. Death, as tough as they come. He certainly is, and I think, Joel, this match as evenly matched as it is that we could very easily see one mistake the outcome in this situation because both these individuals are in phenomenal condition, but Slater obviously has the edge in experience, and we'll see exactly how much that will, will benefit him as this match continues. Dick Slater could put you away with just about anything. He has the experience, the know-how, and the physical ability to really, to really put a wide range of maneuvers on you. Dr. Death, on the other hand, has that Oklahoma stampede, and when he sets you up for it, brother, he puts you down, you're gonna stay down because that hold is tough. Russian foot sweep. Dr. Two Death count. powers out with a two count, as Joel said, and Slater back to the offensive. Boy, he's got a lot of weapons in his arsenal, Joel. There's a the hangman. Don't know if he had it cinched up tight enough to really hurt Dr. Death with it like he might have. But Dr. Death needs to get some momentum. Gets him on Slater, because if he hits him, oh! Slater cracked him with that elbow. He goes for the Boston Crab. He's going for the Boston Crab, and Doc is too powerful. He has the leverage if he could just swing that leg over. Slater's getting the leverage. And Slater's putting all he's got in him, and Dr. Death is tremendous lower body strength. Uh, Doc's hammering it. Doc broke him off with those hard rights. Brother, they're short and choppy, not much finesse. But they are effective. Slater's not goofy. a lot of guys that you may not see normally wrestling against each other. The fans have to pick out who their favorite is, and I think in this particular instance, Dr. Death is the fan favorite. Elevation. Put Slater down, lateral press. He gets just a two count. Dr. Death going up to the hair. Slater's reeling. Both men are down. Carl Fergie with the count. This match has no time limit, so I think we're going to see some different psych tactics than you may be used to. 
I think it's great that the 15 minute time limit was repealed. I know a lot of fans wrote in and have approved of it and felt that for a title that there shouldn't be a time limit on it. Well, Joel, I've just been notified that we've got to take a commercial break at this point in time. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more of Dick Slater and Dr. Ned right after this. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, at the Fairgrounds Pavilion on Mid-South Wrestling. Dr. Ness, Dean Williams sustained a great deal of punishment from Dick Slater outside the ring, but he has made his way back, and Joe, we're seeing that great condition of this Oklahoma center pay off as he's really taking it to Mr. Unpredictable. Well, Doc was staggered, but he managed to reverse that pile driver, and now it's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Dick Slater with the elbow. He goes for the arm whip. He gets it. Sleeper hold. He went for the sleeper hold, but Dr. Ness slid up underneath it. That might have been a tactical error because he fell all the way to his back and now Slater has him in a bad position. Really crank that sleeper in if you have a person down and immobilized. If Dr. Death could get to his feet, he has a chance of breaking this hole, but Slater is a master at it. He calls it good night, Irene, and we've seen him put many a man out with it. He is as proficient with a sleeper as he has many other maneuvers, but the sleeper hole, of course, one of the, one of the toughest weapons in his repertoire as you hear this great crowd, well, oh, you, the chant throughout this building. They're pulling for Steve, and yes, Steve is not out of it. That big bull neck is saving him, saving him from being put out by that sleeper. He's making it back up to a base. He knows he has to do it. The crowd might have helped him in that instance, Jim. I think so, and Dr. Death, rising to the occasion, extricating himself from Goodnight Irene. Dark journey there with a little verbiage with Dr. Death, and he's right back to the attack. I'm glad to see that. He cannot be distracted by that lady. Most certainly not, Jim. Hip toss. He sets for the three-point stance. Yes, he connects. Oh, yeah. Listen to this crowd. He sets for another three-pointer. He has him set up, Jim. I think he can put the stampede on him. The momentum is in the favor of Dr. S.D. Williams. Did you see Dark Journey there with Dick Slater? Slater's on Dream Street right now. Hook it up, Steve. Hit him with that stampede. You got it. No, oh, both men down now. Slater reaching down, getting all he can do in that last crest attempt with a headbutt with Dr. Death. Caught Dr. Death off guard. And the referee, he has a 10 count here, both men with a 10 count. As we see Dark Journey there at the bottom of your screen. Slater going for the figure four, but Duck. Duck catches him again. Duck is, Duck is so strong. Lateral press. Dr. Death gets a two count. Both men getting up slowly. This has been a grueling battle. Doc sets him up for that high vertical back suplex. It looks like he's going to connect. Yes, he does so. It's Slater. Slater's rocking. Dr. Death getting up a little bit quicker now. He knows he has to do it. Look at, look at that tremendous physical conditioning. It's the fourth quarter. Doc's pulling it out. Repeated headbutts and a lateral press, but Slater has his foot on the rope. It's as if Dick Slater was a Nittany Lion from Penn State, and that's Slater taking it to him. Stampede time! Here we go! Yes! He connects it up, but he's holding... No, Slater's too close to the ropes. Dr. Death had him, but Slater, the veteran, going over to the ropes. Doc was a little close there. Doc needs to hit him again. Doc's trying to set him in a leg hole. Dark Journey at ringside. She's... He was setting him for the Boston Crab, but Dark Journey raked his eyes. She raked his eyes, and look at Doc rolling in pain. Well, she's got those long cat-like fingernails and she buried it, looked like to me, buried it in the eyes of Dr. Death. Dr. Death has already had his eyes injured this year. 108 stitches in that left eye. Slater trying to set him for the suit play. Doug blinded, trying to reverse it. Slater takes him into the ropes. He's holding the tights. He grabs him again. He grabbed the tights again. But the referee out of position. There you hear the bell. The winner of the match is Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back on Butch Reed right after this.
from the exciting Mid-South Television Network. Dick Murdoch told you know everyone in the world, not only in Texas, Houston, everybody in the world knows that you are, without a doubt, one of the greatest rash promoters ever in the history of the sport of professional wrestling. And you know you got a $25,000 two-ring battle roll. That's a very, very dangerous event in professional wrestling. But there's only one thing that I hope and I wish for, and that is the last two enters, me and DiBiase. Well, so he was I, hoping the same thing. So yeah, but I got a little bit more, because I want to embarrass him. And then I want to take that $25,000 and go spend it. Because I know he's been out of work. I know he's been injured. I know he ain't got no money coming in. And the fine and the suspension didn't hurt me. Because I've got other things I fall back on. I've got a ranch. I've got a quarter horse. I've got a welding company. I've got a lot. I don't need it. DiBiase, he was eating beans and I was eating steaks. Well, let's just hope that there'll be steak for all January the 5th here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. Don't miss it. Of the match, a scheduled one fall or 10 minute time limit. Introducing from Alaska, weighing 289 pounds, Mike Scott. And weighing in at 260 pounds from Kansas City, Hacksaw Butch Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Mid-South Wrestling, Jim Ross and Joel Watts with you in the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion. Thank you very much for being with us. And we have the North American heavyweight champion, the incomparable Hacksaw Butch Reed, going against a behemoth of a man from the state of Alaska, Mike Scott. Slater wearing that, uh, Reed, rather, wearing that neck brace after what Dick Slater did to him. He says his neck, his neck is still hurting him a little bit. But Reed knows how to go with pain. This is bound to be a physical encounter. Scott taking straight down. I think he caught his feet in the canvas. There's almost 300 pounds that Reed just manhandles. You talk about bad to the bone, and this crowd loves this man. Reed off the ropes with that slingshot. He caught Scott. Scott is down. Or oh, the referee could have counted to 10 or 20 if he would have liked. But a three count is good enough, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the match, Hacksaw Butch Reed. And we'll be back with a Mid-South Tag Team Championship matchup right after this from the network. All over the country, the people are watching. They're seeing the caliber of competition. And I'm ready to roll my sleeves up and jump right back in the middle of it. And to do that, I have to get in the ring against the top competitors. And yes, that's you, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. Now you have this valet that stays on the side, supposedly on the side, Dark Journey. I don't know what you did to get her on your side, Slater, but you must really have her snowed. But you can't snow me. I know exactly how you are, and I know that you'll do anything to win a match. Well, I'm back in Mid-South, and I'm telling all my fans and my friends that I'm here to stay. And to stay in this area, I have to keep on winning and progressing and getting better and better. And Slater, I can't let somebody like you knock me down and keep me down. So I'm coming at you 110%, and you better be ready for Terry Taylor, because I'm definitely going to be ready for Mr. Unpredictable. Professional wrestling, I've always wrestled for a great deal of money. But I'm going to tell you something. I've bought you nice clothes, and you wear the finest things that I've ever seen on a lady before. But I'm going to tell you what you, Terry Taylor, since you have such a great big name around the Mid-South area, I'm going to do this one for free. I'm not going to take a dime from anybody. But what I'm going to do, Terry Taylor, since you are such a hot number with the chicks, is I'm going to take you and rearrange your face a little bit so they'll understand what you really are. Because, Terry Taylor, in your best day, you will never be able to put my back on the mat for the one, two, three, and I'm going to rearrange them a little bit, baby. Titles, first of all, the champions in a one fall TV time remaining, weighing 280 pounds, the nightmare. And weighing 225 pounds, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert.
here in Mid-South Threshing. There are the Bruce Brothers. Mad Dog Boyd to your right. Pork Chops Cash just off the camera. There he is on your left. They will be the challengers for the Mid-South Tag Team Championship that you will be witnessing momentarily here on Mid-South Wrestling. Sir Oliver Humperdinck's duo of Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert and the Nightmare, the Chip. Gilbert and the Nightmare are a tough duo. And the Bruise Brothers are bad to the bone. This is going to be a great main event. Well, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, after what we saw last week, I was right in the ring with him. He got framed. I think we can say that Eddie Gilbert last week was framed in more ways than one. Gilbert going to the ropes. He certainly doesn't want anyone to mess up his beautiful face, Joel. But Pork Chops and Mad Dog maybe do a little cosmetic surgery on Hot Stuff's facial features before this one's all over with. They know how to duke it. Mad Dog Boyd hits you with that splash, brother. It's all over. Gilbert takes, chops into the corner, hits him with some rights. Ah, high elevation. Catch, catch, body slam. Another one. Gilbert went to the wrong corner that time. And Mad Dog Boyd caught him. Listen to this crowd. Well, it's about. 300 pounds of uh, so-called steel and sex appeal. I've heard him describe himself that way. We'll buy that for the time being. It's Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert coming back into the squared circle and tagging the nightmare. Now, the pace will change here. Strategies will change, obviously. I think that's one thing that makes Gilbert and the nightmare a good team is because they have that... A change of pace. They can bring the big man in when they need to. Cash catching him with right crosses. Whoa, he tried to body slam him. Pork chops Cash. The nightmare one. Cash with a nice reverse. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's almost 300 pounds. The pork chops picked him right up. The crowd here in Tulsa loves it. Sir Oliver Humperdinck at ringside is not extremely happy at this point in time. And the Nightmare tagging back in Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. And we have yet to see an official appearance, Joel, by the Mad Dog, the large 300-pounder, as we see his... Well, there he comes. Mad Dog Boyd into the ring, and I'll tell you, his size will fool you because he could really motor in that ring. He could get up and going. When he's on his feet, he's practically unstoppable. He's one of those people that can back alley brawl with the best of them. He stops Gilbert from a body slam. Gilbert went for the wrong hold. Well, hot stuff Eddie Gilbert is not having a very fruitful evening at this point in time. Nothing has worked. And the look on his face is not a look of arrogance, but one of frustration. Well, the Bruce Brothers are a tough team to scout. Well, not only will they hurt your body, they'll hurt your feelings, as Eddie Gilbert has found out thus far. Cash with a couple of hard rights. Gilbert. That was blatant, blatant break of the eyes. That's Gilbert with left jabs. He's staggering Cash. Cash still on his feet, though. Cash needs to connect back. I'm sure those cobwebs are starting to... Whoa! Oh, that right hand, Walid. And now the jabs. It looks like Muhammad Ali out there jabbing. Pork chops Cash. Taking it to the nightmare. Now back to his... It's legal adversary. Coming up next, we have another Mid-South Television title bout. Jake the Snake Roberts against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. Stay with us. This is going to be a great main event. A nightmare. Pulling Bruce Brother, Pork Chops Cash by the tights. Hurt his back right there, too, Joel. He came down hard off that rope. Gilbert with a nice tactical move. He made his attack real quick. Well, they can build that momentum. 
side. Now the opportunist hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. I think we can expect to see him kick into another gear here. He's got the advantage. Oh, big collision there in the center of the ring. Both men down. Now, once again, the official, Carl Fergie, has a 10 count, which is utilized in the Mid-South area, 10 count for both these athletes. One or the other to regain their feet there. I saw Seth Eddie Gilbert, but there's a tag. Oh, and here comes Dog with those shoulder smashes. He is lethal with those. Once he gets going, he gets some momentum. Look at how quick he is. He has them both staggered. There's a left hand to the ear, it looked like, right inside the jaw. They set him up and fire him together. The men's out tag champions business plan. There's a big splash right there. Over to go the ring apron. He just about ahead of it. But the referee's calling for the bell. The referee's calling interference. There was interference, I think, in that match. It got the champions a last grasp effort. Him $25,000, a great way to come back to Houston. Well, Peter, uh, I found out over the past several weeks that uh, money's not everything, and I found out I had a lot of friends I didn't know I had before. But even though money's not everything, it sure helps, and I haven't been making any money in recent weeks. Doc is still my partner. $25,000 is still a lot of money split in half, and we're going to go out, even though it's a very dangerous match, and I've heard of that lately, we're going to go out and do our dead level best to take that money home. $25,000. Sam Houston calls to him. Get ready. Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death is back. Two giant favorites. Don't miss it. And introducing from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 251 pounds, Jake the Snake Roberts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are back at Mid-South Wrestling, the television tournament in full swing here as we have Jake the Snake Roberts going against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. Jake the Snake thus far has defeated Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert and Ricky Gibson. Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer has defeated Nick Patrick. And against Dr. D.S.T. Williams, both men were counted out of the ring, so his Sawyer's name was put back into the hat. And here's the drawing. Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer and Jake the Snake Roberts in round number 12 of our television to member one fall or television time remaining. Sawyer hammers the ring post, the turnbuckle rather. He went for a right. Jake the Snake got out of the way. Jake the Snake is a crowd favorite, but uh, I think he can match tactic for tactic with Sawyer if he needs to. Sawyer in there, hanging on to the ropes. Uh, referee trying to break that. to this crowd. Buzz Sawyer. Well, this is, the kind of, this is the kind of action you get in the Mid-South area, the greatest wrestling fans in the world. We've got them right here. Sawyer pulling that hair. Sawyer goes up and over. Jake the Snake with the hip toss. And I'll tell you one thing. We all know the crowd wants. A lot of them are wearing it on their shirts. We got people at ringside with DDT t-shirts. We've seen signs with DDT. That's what they'd like to see on Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. Just a minute ago, Buzz Sawyer really hit that wing post hard. Let me see a great shot of the crowd. If we can, I'd like to look at that once again in slow motion where Buzz Sawyer ran into that turnbuckle. Hard against that ring post. DDT! with a hard shoulder smash, grab toe hold. Just been informed that we can take a look at that slow motion replay now. 
Buzz Sawyer, as he went to the ring post, look at him, he's coming in after Jake the Snake, but man, did he hammer that ring post area. He really connected back to the match. Well, Jake is taking over on that injured shoulder. Very good tactical maneuver by the Snake. And he's not gonna let an opportunity draw like that pass him by, no doubt about that one. Oh, certainly, he's still attacking that arm area. People really get behind Jake the Snake Roberts. I saw you using the hair. See the face of Sawyer, he's in a lot of pain. Jake the Snake using that six foot, six inch frame, the leverage. Great shot of those two men looking eye to eye. Once again, Sawyer using the hair. Sawyer throws that clubbing forearm into the chest of Jake Roberts, and he is burying it. The man dog goes to the elbow, and Jake the Snake out of the way, back to the arm bar. Sound, sound strategy being exercised, much to the delight of this tremendous crowd in the Tulsa Fairgrounds Pavilion, and we certainly hope you're enjoying it. There's a great shot of some fantastic fans. We've got them all over the Mid-South area. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, for Oliver Humperdinck's Humongous, if we have time, we'll try to take a look at Humongous in this hour of Mid-South Wrestling. Once again, this about one fall or TV time remaining. Jake the Snake coming off hard off the ropes, and again, so you're using the hair to take Jake the Snake outside the ring. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the same basic task all your exercise last week against Dr. Death in that television tournament match. And referee Tommy Gibbert's got all he can do to keep Sawyer in the ring. Jake the Snake Roberts now is in deep trouble because the Mad Dog is relentless. He will stay on the attack, stay on the offensive as long as he physically can. Referee Tommy Gilbert closes the break of the hold there. Sawyer up and over that top rope. Blatant rule infractions here, but that's the way Sawyer operates. High vertical back soon play. Jack the Snake's in trouble. Two count. Jake the Snake had to really reach down and come up with enough strength to kick out of that pending predicament that Sawyer had him in. Remember now, one fall or television time remaining. This is a quarterfinal confrontation in the mid season tournament match. Sorry, looks to be doing something there. The fans can sense it. Jake the Snake was looked to be writhing in pain. seen anybody get up yet from the DDT. The DDT, one of the most punishing holds in all of wrestling. We have time later on in the hour. We'll have a segment about some of the punishing holds in pro wrestling. Just listen to the crowd. Really get behind. You see you have people holding up sides. DDT. The fans really love that hold, but a lot of wrestling experts are criticizing and saying that it might, that maybe it should be banned. And maybe it is just a little bit too dangerous. Now here's a move that I've seen Jake use before. Boy, is that painful. The head going right to the jaw, Sire. You can tell he's in a lot of pain, but what a great way to break out of it. Jake the Snake is so unorthodox. He can catch him any time. Sawyer breaks him to the ropes. Sawyer's a stocky individual. 
enough to move. Toe to toe now. What a battle. Again, he sets for it. Sire dumps him over that top rope. The referee calls for the bell. That's an automatic disqualification. What's going to happen there? That's going to eliminate Jake the Snake. That's going to eliminate Bill Sawyer. The winner of the match, Jake the Snake Roberts, and he moves on in the television tournament. And we'll be back with Humongous against Perry Jackson. seems to have bothered a few people. And maybe you're starting to bother me because you see, anytime I go into a ring and I look across it and the man I'm looking at is a man that's standing in me and my money. So, you're an instant enemy. Have not offended me, but yet you're an enemy. Why? Because you're standing in my way. A lot of people have tried to stand in my way. There's a long list of fools, though. Sawyer, you don't want to play with my game, my man, because I'm a little bit different, and everybody else knows that. But evidently, you don't. It's time for the teacher to go to work now, isn't it? <laughs> Smooth talker, you know, the guy that sits back and takes everything so easy. Just sits back and, and tries to get your raffle, tries to get the DDT on you. He looks around at all the thousands of people and they're going, DDT, DDT. Well, you know what I think about the DDT? First, tough guy, you got to get it on me. Second, you got to drop me down. And third, you got to beat up the lay on top of me. One, two, three. I'm tired of having stepping stones, Jake Roberts, Jake Snake. I'm tired of walking over people. You're in my way, and I'm going to keep stepping and stepping. And finally, you're going to crumble. Our first standby bout from Mid-South Sports, a one fall or television time remaining. Introducing from Texarkana, Arkansas, weighing 250 pounds, Perry Jackson. Twenty pounds, Humongous. Sir Oliver Hubbard Inc. in the ring with Humongous here on Miss South Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for staying with us. As Humongous to do battle against Young Perry Jackson, and there you see Humongous Perry Jackson. Without a doubt, this is the toughest match of his career. The young man from Texarkana, Arkansas. He's a rookie. But he has a lot of potential. The humongous is a tough nut to crack. He's an awesome athlete at 320 pounds, about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six inches tall, and it's just tremendous strength. Perry Jackson here needs to get something going against Humongous. You need some kind of strategy to go against him. You really blows to the face or ineffective there. He sets up for the shin and the maki. Well, Humongous has put many a man away with a shin and the maki, and the referee has called for the bell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Carl Fergie is exhorting Sir Oliver Humperdinck to come and remove Humongous and Perry Jackson. What she does, there's the winner, and we'll be back with tag team action on Miss South Wrestling right after this from the network. Perez will go against Humongous. Only the biggest man in professional wrestling that I have to worry about in the ring, but I got Humperdinck and a mask to keep my eyes on. Humperdinck, you've always been a snake and everybody knows that. And the mask can do a lot of damage. I've seen it hurt a lot of people. Well, Humongous, I got something. I'm not gonna come at you head on. I'm not gonna try to beat you strength-wise. I'm not gonna try to run from you. I'm gonna try to get right behind you. And we'll put you down with a belly to the back. One, two, three, because that mask helps the front, but it don't help the back. And that's where I'm gonna come from. Stand by bout. A one fall or TV time remaining. Bill weighing 245 pounds, Ricky Starr. 
Also in his corner, weighing 265 pounds from Michigan, Rob Rickensteiner. And their opponents, first of all, from Tampa, Florida, weighing 237 pounds, Al Perez. And from Pensacola, weighing 224 pounds, Ricky Gibson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our second standby match here on Mid-South Wrestling. It'll be a tag team encounter. It's Al Perez and Ricky Gibson. There's the bell. Go against Ricky Starr and Rob Ricksteiner. And it is Ricksteiner and Perez, two men with tremendous amateur backgrounds, great futures in this profession, locking it up here on Mid-South Wrestling. Rick Steiner clinging tenaciously to that headlock. Fires him off. Oh, Rick Steiner with a hard shoulder smash, but Perez, using that speed and agility, he catches Rick Steiner. A hip toss. Last week we saw Al Perez against Nature Boy Rick Flair. Perez put up quite a fight. But after sustaining a really hard fall, Nature Boy Rick Flair caught him in that figure four. Ricky Gibson in now against Rob Ricksteiner. Ricksteiner, one-handed body slam, beautiful. Ricky Gibson, former junior heavyweight champion of the world, showing his wrestling expertise as he is offsetting that tremendous size and I would assume strength advantage that Rick Steiner possesses. Rick Steiner's a tough customer, no doubt about it. Ricky Gibson ended up catching Rick Steiner with a headbutt to the midsection. Rick Steiner, I think, just trying to get out of the way of danger in that place. Gibson catches him a body slam and a hard drop kick. Rick Steiner with the edge and the professional wrestling experience. I think that helped him out right then against Rick Steiner. Perez coming off those ropes. Nice move. Al Perez and Ricky Gibson operating very well together. Well, high elevation. Real high elevation for the young man from Nashville, Tennessee. Double drop kick. Double drop kick, ladies and gentlemen, and they are really putting this young man from Tennessee on Dream Street. Another high elevation. Gibson and Perez working as smooth as silk here on Mid-South Wrestling. Oh, he sets up for his hole. He sets it up, and he gets it. One, two, and three, yes. The reverse step over to hole. It's a painful hole. Let's look at that reverse step over toe hold that Ricky Gibson used to put away Ricky Starr, Joel, great maneuver by this athlete. Brother, it is painful. Once he gets that thing locked in, there's just about no way to pull your shoulders out. See Tommy Gilbert calling for the bell, and Al Perez has to help his partner break this hold. I've seen a lot of times they can be tangled up in that thing for quite some time. They have a distinct advantage on that 22-man two-ring battle royal for $25,000. You know, it's one for all, all for one, but when it comes to brothers, we're just gonna split it. 22 right man, 22 man, Hector, how much money? $25,000. That's right. 25 hombres, 22, 22 hombres, 25 mil dólares. Y vamos a hacer todo lo posible por ganar eso con dos rines, una batea campal, este domingo, 5 de enero. Aquí nos vemos, viva México, ¿verdad, carnal? Sí, es, y allí los esperamos. Muchas gracias. This Sunday night, Sam Houston Coliseum. Fabulous ones, Mr. Botch, as every man, woman, and child in this arena knows. And we're here for one reason, that's 25,000 big ones. And see, we got a little advantage because, see, we've been tag teaming him for three years together. It's going to be not just one guy in that battle royal, it's going to be two guys. I watch his back, he watches my back. We're just like this, man. I know what he's thinking, here's what I'm thinking, and very, very shortly, we're going to be $25,000 richer. And what are you thinking? I'm thinking about $25,000 and what I'm going to spend it on if it's any of your business. Well, it's probably not any of my business, but the check will have my name on it if you win it. Well, well the back of the check, is, check is what I want to know. Are your checks good here? You sign the front and we'll sign the back, sweetheart. And that will be on Sunday night, January the 5th, here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. Don't miss it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't miss it.
here at the Sam Houston Coliseum. And on the outside, you're watching Steve Kern, who is partners with the other blonde whom you see in the ring, and that is Stan Lane. The man whom they have caught in that reverse uh, headlock is Hector Guerrero, and his brother Chavo Guerrero is on the outside. So this is a tag team battle between the fabulous ones, or the fabs, if you will, and the Guerrero brothers. And you see Chavo getting around there, trying to get into a position to protect his brother, who has just hit into that, yes, he was feeling it. It's hard, it's unyielding, it's a tough thing to run your head into, and he just did. And as Hector rises up rather painfully to his feet, you can see that Kirk Lane, who is avoiding the issue, managed to get away, but they swap places. It's a tough team, the fabulous ones. They are colorful to the extreme. They are tough to the very core. And on this, this Sunday night, and if you're watching on Saturday night, it's tomorrow night, and if you're watching on Sunday, it's tonight. Remember, they are going to be four of the contestants who will be in the 25-man battle royal. Multiply those four by six, and you have all the wrestlers, and just add Lord Humperdinck, and he'll be able to uh, supply the 25th man. If that doesn't promise to become a tradition like the 11th man, but it's a tradition for a two-ring battle royal here in the city of Houston, and we're proud of it, and it is always a super, super action-packed night when there is the annual two-ring battle royal. And tonight is the time, and it ought to be sensational. So we look now as the fabulous ones with um, Kern in the ring and Lane on the outside move in on Hector, who has caught an inordinate amount of punishment in this, and he is now in danger of being lifted up in the air and up he goes and they fall backwards is hard to minimize hard to protect and shattering when it happens to you and he's confident that he's got the pin but he didn't get it because that foot belonged to hector's brother chavo now these four men will have a return match Tonight at the Sam Houston Coliseum, starting at 7 o'clock, they will have their return match only. And this one, it will be Texas Tornado style. That means that all four men will be in the ring at the same time. And that means a tremendous amount of action that takes place from the swift interchange that can come between the, the pairs. But there is a sleep hold. And as Kern puts the pressure on, Hector is fighting to get rid of it, and Hector got caught in that syndrome of getting near to his brother and then being jerked away by legal and illegal means. And he is in a, in a tough spot. But the battle at the Coliseum tonight, Sunday night, starting at 7 o'clock, that battle, the Texas Tornado battle, will be only one of 10 Yes, nine great matches and winding up with the two-ring, 25-man, $5,000 prize money battle royal. And this sleep hold is in danger of working as far as Guerrero is concerned. And you can bet that uh, Kern is thinking happily that it has worked. But right there is... That could be the answer if the referee decides that it will be the signal, but it isn't the signal. The referee did not, did not. He didn't feel that that arm was absolutely and positively limp and without control, and therefore he, he did not call a victory. But as Kern gets in and applies the uh, reverse chin lift, keeps that uh, body uh, sort of immobile as he gets his weight on it. But right now, Hector has come down and he is chomping on the finger of Stan Kerr, Steve Kern, rather, and he was about to take a piece of it. Into the ring comes Stan Lane. And Lane is taking over where his partner left off and he's trying the same thing, a reverse uh, chin lock. 
uh, after that clothesline. Now, the, this hold is called the cobra hold. It sometimes has the effect of um, putting a man to sleep. And when it doesn't, it has the effect of weakening him to the point that you can wear him down because he's not getting sufficient uh, blood to the brain and sufficient oxygen to keep it working. Beautiful move by Hector Guerrero. That quick move into shaking his body and making it difficult to be held aloft uh, brought him down to the canvas, but he was in worse shape to begin with, so he has not recovered from the shattering contact with the with the with the canvas in comes Steve Kern Kern takes over but now he's got to get hold of Hector Guerrero and Guerrero is going to give that last gasp of strength and there's the touch and listen to those fans as they break loose and he comes in with those reverse kicks those mule kicks and the drop kicks and Hector is using his feet well and using his head too I'll tell you and he will when all four of them are in the ring legally in the great card at the Coliseum Sunday night, this Sunday night, starting at 7. And there is a race across that ring. We, we've got uh, Lane down. We've got Kern outside the ring. The referee is arguing with Chavo Guerrero, and he has made this mistake on several occasions tonight, and the fans are upset about it. Now we're getting a quick switch and the man underneath is Steve Kern, who has given the subterfuge that he was still the man who had been in the ring before and was injured by the throw. And there's a wrap-up as uh, Guerrero takes him in a small package and absolutely wraps his shoulders down to the, to the canvas. And uh, the fans are uh, jubilant, of course, but... Uh, Referee Tommy Gilbert is looking these fellows it's over and he's not certain of, of what happened. And, and now, as he moves around that ring, we've got the fabulous ones throwing Guerreros in all directions. And as they gang up on Hector, he catches both of them. And Chavo comes in and Chavo is ready. He says, if that's the way they want to do it, let's have it. They have been... The Guerreros have been declared the winners, but the losers are still on their feet, and you can get a good look there at the fabulous one, Steve Kern. Be at the Coliseum when all four of them are in that still ring, and it will be great. It starts at 7 tonight. We're now faced with a demand here in 1985 for a Texas Tornado match in Chavo. You know, Mr. Bosch, excuse me. They beat us at their game. No excuses. They beat us. We went down in defeat. Well, tonight you just witnessed it. They went down in defeat. But we are not happy. We're not satisfied. We beat them at their game. Now we want to beat them in our game. They want to switch. We can switch. We brought on to the other side. We want them in the ring. Two in there against two. No tag. No rules. Let's all go in there and let's beat the heck out of each other. And let's see who comes out on top. That's the way we want it. That's the way we want to start our 1986 with these two guys. Este es el canal en español. That's right. Me gustaría hacer una cosa. Si ellos quieren hacer esto, lo que quieren hacer, nosotros les ganamos a su estilo. Ahora que vengan a nuestro estilo, una lucha de torbellino, o sea, que una lucha dos adentro del ring, super libre como ellos quieran, o sea, sin reglas nada a lo como ellos quieran verdad canal así es y si ustedes nos soportan como ustedes nos han dando ese apoyo nosotros vamos a decir que también nosotros los mexicanos sabemos a darles con lo que quieren all right i guarantee it that's right mr boss let him come at any time you know mr boss you knew my father and he always came through with his promises yeah. and we're going to promise you nobody's going to run over the guerrero name no uh, way it's out of controversy hey. here in houston wrestling What's the they idea? have accepted a texas tornado match that means all four men in the ring at the same time no rules an ultimate tag team feud settler with the Guerrero yeah, we brothers. We know what that means. What's the idea of Paul Bosch coming back there and saying if we don't sign a tornado match, we can't go for the $25,000, huh? What kind of pressure is that? Let me tell you something. We've wrestled all over the world, and we've beaten teams all over the world much tougher, much bigger, and much better than those Guerrero guys. Like I said, a lot lesser teams can come out here and make excuses about losing. I'm not going to do that because we're class athletes. I could say that we had jet lag, which we did. I can say that Steve has the flu, he's been sick for a week. 
But I'm not going to say that, because we're too good. Let me tell you something, Grace. You signed your death warrant, right, big man? You tell them, Stan, if you get these people to shut up for a minute, I'll talk to you. This is what happens to us every time we go anywhere. Shut up for you. Jesus, how are you supposed to talk? If these people got any consideration for somebody out here trying to carry out a conversation, jet lag, the flu, the Guerreros cheated. They cheated. I know they cheated. Those two guys didn't ever tag. They switched. If it takes a tornado death match for us to come back to take the $25,000, then I guess that's what you got. But I don't want to wrestle here. I hate you people. I see him and watch Dick Murdoch, that huge man from Waxahachie, Texas, as he wails away at a much battered Ted DiBiase. And DiBiase was caught in that corner and had trouble getting out of it. Murdoch DiBiase, one of the bitterest feuds we have had in years here as DiBiase was almost removed from wrestling permanently because of the attack by Dick Murdoch when these two had been friends before but ended in a violent explosion and we held our breath and watched the progress of Ted DiBiase as he returned to action and this is his return in an effort to get even with Dickie Murdoch but right now Mur tremendous amount of ability and has made his mark here but right now Hasse is more interested in making his mark on Murdoch as he comes in and gives him some of the same kind of treatment he has received and some of the same kind of treatment he will be getting at the Coliseum tonight because DiBiase and his father, his uncle, were well-known stars back in the in the 40s and uh, Dick Murdoch is the worldwide star at this time, a man who is as well-known in Tokyo as he is in Timbuktu in this country, I tell you. There is Ted DiBiase doing something for which people once booed him and right now they are cheering him because they are hoping to see Dick Murdoch have his head handed to him. On the floor, Ted DiBiase. Speaking of DiBiase and, or rather Murdoch and his wrestling family, DiBiase is one of the few men in rest, ever in wrestling whose mother and father were both wrestlers. And as, oh, 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 there was a tremendous contact that time with that um, immovable bar across the top of that barricade. And DiBiase is, a, his fans all, all of a sudden were quiet. They're, they're hoping for a win for Ted DiBiase. They want to see him get even with Murdoch. They will want to see him get even tonight in the ninth match on the 10 match card. Because as they move in, uh, DiBiase with Dr. Death in his corner and Murdoch with Superstar, the masked Superstar, we're going to have that place literally exploding, I can tell you that. You see Murdoch, you see him over there with his arm uh, through the ropes and he's looking for an opportunity to get at DiBiase at the earliest possible instant and as he comes out now he is oh oh man you talk about a neck breaker he comes in there and I told you that a rabbit punch was bothering him he, he has even more trouble now with that uh, triple wallop assault by Dick Murdoch and as Dick rolls him over, he is trying to finish him positively, and this could do it. Murdoch on top, and Tommy Gilbert looking. Gilbert has in injured his arm, his left arm, in uh, the match prior to this time. One of the difficulties of refereeing. But he came in to handle this event, uh, saying that he thought it would, it would uh, help him a little bit, but it has not really helped him. He has not been able to do anything physically to take control of the battle. Murdoch on the outside, and as he gets in there, he is set to... Well, there is something that you're not going to see very often. I was held my breath that time wondering exactly what he was going to do. He pushed him forward on his face and fell right along with him and landed with that knee in his back. DiBiase underneath. There's one, there's two, and close. Close goes the referee now being knocked across by 
uh, Murdoch and watch DiBiase. He is going to depend on that gloved hand of his to decide this battle and Murdoch is just as convinced that he's going to heist a bitter road to uh, scoring a win over Murdoch has uh, finally been reached at least that is what he thought at this particular moment but um, stay right along with us and here comes the masked superstar and car as he comes into the in, into the picture comes in, into the ring and Murdoch has uh, recovered to some extent and DiBiase is taking the full brunt of the attack of um, uh, two people who weigh close to 280 pounds of a piece the timekeeper's bell means nothing the referee has an injured arm and the fans here are angered over what is happening to DiBiase who has scored a win and boom suffers a pile driver and that was a, a tough rugged and dangerous wallet at the Coliseum tonight those two men this masked superstar and Dick Murdoch will be paired DiBiase will have his friend Dr. Death the Oklahoma Wildcat and they will be tangling that is the ninth match of a 10 match card and that pack short lived when this is settled at the Coliseum tonight the two ring battle royal will follow will follow that tag match but there'll be uh, eight other matches preceding these two we'll see you for certain at the coliseum tonight because that's where the action is it's always the place for wrestling action and you see the doctor leaning over ted dibiase we'll see you at the coliseum Mass superstar, Doc. He's internationally known, known around the world. He says he's in Mel South for a reason. He's on a mission, but he's not going to tell anybody. Well, I know you're a mass superstar, and I know what your mission is. You're a bounty hunter. You're a man that goes to the highest bidder. You try to end people's career, break their legs, break their necks, and send them their own way. And nobody knows what that's about better than Ted DiBiase, because, yes, I've been there. But I've learned a valuable lesson, Dick Murdoch, because of you. I was laying flat on my back, not knowing whether I'd ever wrestle again because you tried to take my livelihood away from me. I found out that money's not everything, and you can't buy friends. I want to tell you something, Murdoch. What goes around comes around, and brother, yours is coming around. And Superstar, this is what you got to handle right here. I'm one of the greatest athletes today in the world, not only in professional wrestling, I'm a superstar. And I called him long distance, asking him to come in here to help me settle one thing, the DiBiase and Dr. Death Steve Williams feud. And I'll guarantee you what, this man right here, Steve Williams, has got more credentials than you've ever thought about having. You know, I don't have to worry about Dick Murdoch. All he wants me to do is keep you out of there, Dr. Death. You picked up a nickname by bumping heads in football. Well, you and I are gonna bump heads in the ring. And this man's gonna take care of you, DiBiase. No more crying, no more phone calls. When he gets you all by yourself, because Dr. Death, you're going to be having your hands full with me. You're not going to be involved in the match. It's just going to be Ted and Murdoch. Weighing in at 270 pounds from Detroit, Ron Rickbiner. His opponent, weighing in at 255 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia, the master of the D. the bell now to start the action here at the ringside in the Sam Houston Coliseum and the gentleman in those characteristic long pants that he wears and you can't call them anything except uh, pants they are sweatpants is Jake the Snake Roberts his opposition Rob Ricksteiner powerfully built and who uh, can look ahead to a long career in wrestling if he manages to get past the earlier matches he has recently come into the game but he is a man who learns rapidly and has the power with which to carry out the things that his brain tells him he should do 
twisting arm lock and as he maneuvers around Jake the Snake these fans uh, come to life and they start screaming to referee Carl Fergie to tell him that the man pulled hair and used an illegal method of taking the snake down to the mat. Jake is ready. Jake wants to move in with that big fist of his and as his t-shirt always says, he is cruel but he's fair. And he figures if a man has been doing something illegal to him, he's going to repay him in kind. You saw it, he did it. And that Rick Steiner is the picture of a powerhouse, I'll tell you. He has a lot of utility in that muscular body of his, and he's trying to get the referee now to do something about the hair pulling because it's happening to him. Jake is getting just a little bit hostile as he walks back and forth, literally. Listen, listen. DDT, and I want to tell you that has become a popular battle cry. As Rob Ricksteiner moves outside that ring to gain a measure of protection, DDT was tempted to come over and plant his but he didn't do it. Kicking a man who isn't looking is cruel, but sometimes it's fair. Rob Ricksteiner. Tough customer, and I want to tell you, a star to be in this game. When you come in with that advantage of having that much body, and that much athletic ability, then you're going to go places. Jake the Snake has decided that maybe he's approaching this in the wrong manner. And that turning loose on Rob Ricksteiner might be the way that he can best do something about it. And Ricksteiner urges the referee to get Jake to open up those cruel but fair fists. Jake brought on in a tremendous manner with these Houston fans. He is a man who has scored well with them. They like what he does in the ring, and they like what he does outside. Body slam and a beauty. Here he goes for the DDT, that sudden drop into a face lock that, that literally uh, annihilates his opponent. That is one of the most effective holds that I have seen in many years. Of course, it has, front face lock has existed in wrestling for many years, but with the manner in which Jake the Snake incorporates it into his general attack that really pays off. struggle in there as they maneuver around in, in the ring and it's Jake the Snake who came up the winner. He's the guy who got the best of that struggle. Here goes for the DDT and look at I'll tell you, Rob Ricksteiner is acting like Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake has slithered around that ring and escaped a lot of punishment during his career. The five minute mark has gone by and Rob Ricksteiner feels that maybe he can learn to do the same thing. But Jake isn't going any place now except at Rob, head on. You can hear that noise, that chant, the chant that follows him every place he goes. Jake now using this soft approach. This test of strength goes to Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner is able to get the pressure on those hands. He's able to bend the back. And now as Jake comes up, he looks for the opportunity to 
even it. But I'll tell you, pride is worth fighting for, but it can sure get you into trouble. Jake could find another way out of this, but uh, he was trying to equal the pressure being put on by Rob Ricksteiner. Go, Jake, go. That's not exactly DDT, but when he gets in position for it, they'll give him the DDT chance. So we've got Rob Ricksteiner to put Jake the Snake down by sheer muscle. Oh, he went for the open spot, the wide open space in there under those arms and against the, the ribs. Pressure down on that top rope, and you saw the snap of the rope. And as we have told you many times, the ropes are really cables covered with rubber. Now, Jake's in trouble. He has caught some of the effectiveness of the combination of um, Rick Steiner's muscle, Rick Steiner's ability, and he is trying to recover from that so that he can move in on this man and take care of him. Jake into the ropes. He got a shoulder. The shoulder swung around and hit him. Offensive move by uh, Rob Ricksteiner and Jake's in trouble. Rapid punch and now he had to fight his way out from underneath with that hard, hard bench press move. Reverse chin lock. Now, the Joe goes, Jake goes. There on Jake's side, and the go, Jake go rings out here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. And as Jake moves up to one knee and one foot, he's halfway up there, but that's a, there it is. And Rob Ricksteiner isn't, isn't sure, he's not certain that he can do it with strength, so he gets around for the illegal leverage and sure did it that time. So Jake's caught. Snake is in a noose right now and in a trap too. And as he starts to maneuver, Rob Ricksteiner is able to shift that referee around almost at will as he goes from one side to the other. Is it a chokehold? Well, if that chin remains in the crook of the arm, it's not a chokehold. But if he lets that slip down and uses the forearm against the throat, it sure becomes a chokehold. And it only takes an inch or two of movement to do it. Jake goes for the standing arm lock, the Japanese arm lock. And again, he was jerked off his feet that time and taken down to the canvas and Carl Fergie's arguing with Rick Steiner. The fans are snitching on Rick Steiner. They're telling the referee that he did there, but Rick Steiner knows the referee didn't actually see it and is hesitating about breaking it because he, he knows that he's supposed to see what happens. So Rick Steiner stays behind Jake. He leans in solidly and presses against the back of Jake's head, pushes that chin forward, and as Jake maneuvers around to get into a position, you see him fighting his way up. Ten minutes have gone by, ten minutes, and Jake comes driving back with that elbow found tender territory out of the ring and off onto the floor right here alongside of us almost in our lap jake the snake there's rick steiner outside the ropes and doing the clubbing and he smashed he, he smashed jake the snake into the ring post and watch out here's jake the snake no him down into the mat. Tremendous move. And this crowd just jumped up to its feet. Those people just let loose a roar. 
Look around at this crowd if you can. The people standing up there screaming and the moment that head hit that canvas, they let out a roar, a much deserved roar. Jake the Snake is a winner and Jake the Snake used the DDT. You couldn't find happier fans any place than those here in the Sam Houston Coliseum. Jim Duggan against the Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater, in round number 13 of the Mid-South Television title tournament. It was a semi-final round. We'll see the conclusion of that match in just a moment. Dad, I know you have some comments. Well, this is the first television taping since the uh, new year, and we're very excited. We want to wish everybody a great new year. 1986 is going to be a big one for Mid-South. Our syndication is expanding due to demand by the fans across the country that have learned also that Mid-South, because of the fans in our area, is the number one syndicated sports show in America. So we will be making a lot of expansion. Some exciting matches. New tag team champions, Ted DiBiase and Dr. Death Steve Williams. DiBiase back. Dick Murdoch is here today. He has been suspended for 45 days. A lot happening. We'll get right into the action after these words from Joel. Well, we're going to go to the beautiful Oklahoma City Myriad for the Mid-South Television Tournament semifinal round. Hacksaw Jim Duggan against Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater. Let's watch that tape right now. Now, Slater's usually the kind of guy that once he gets a little bit of momentum like that, he'll keep on you. He'll be relentless. But I think at that point, he hesitated just a little bit too much when he went for that flying headbutt. Of course, he was a little bit staggered and dazed after Duggan was hammering him. Duggan with the spear! Duggan with the spear, but I don't know if he had it set up quite like he wanted it to. Both men are down. Duggan appears to have hit his head. You can see his eyes kind of batting there. And he's trying to regain his composure, clear those cobwebs out. And, of course, Dick Slater has had to deal with the cobwebs all through this match, I think. There, Duggan falls into... Slater falls into the ropes, tying him up. Duggan has him tied up, and Dark Journey's up on the ring apron. It looks like Dark Journey's handing something to Dick Slater as Tommy Gilbert is trying to keep Duggan off of him. Here comes Deborah to try to even up the score, but I think it's too late. Slater already has something on his hand, but Duggan caught him, yeah! Duggan caught that thing on his hand. Oh! He just waylaid Slater with it. Gilbert down for the count. One, two, and three, Duggan's the winner. Duggan is the winner of the TV title tournament semifinal, but Gilbert has found it. Gilbert sees the thing on Duggan's hand. And he's calling for the bell. He's calling the, for the bell and raising Dick Slater's hand. A reverse decision. Tommy Gilbert has reversed the decision. Well, as you can see, a very controversial render there. Tommy Gilbert changing the decision because Hacksaw Jim Duggan was found to have a foreign object. Uh, many of the fans are unhappy with that decision, but be that as it may, Dick Slater advances in the TV title tournament to the finals. That's right, and those finals will be here next week against Jake the Snake Roberts. That's going to be a tremendous confrontation because Jake the Snake is the master of the DDT. He's also a tremendous tactician. Right now, let's go to the ring. Jim Ross is standing by to interview the new Mid-South Tag Team Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, here with me in the ring, I'd like to introduce the new Mid-South Tag Team Champions. <laughs> Dr. S. D. Williams and Ted DiBiase. And I must say, on this auspicious occasion, it is certainly tremendous to see Ted DiBiase back in the squared circle. Thank you very much, Jim. You know, through a lot of changes here lately, you know, when I, when I got hurt, this injury was like running into a brick wall and somebody hit me over the head and opened my eyes because I realized at that point in time that all the money that I'd acquired and all of the uh, all of the prestige and glory that I had so viciously sought for so long it meant absolutely nothing if I didn't have my health. And uh, Dr. Death has been a good friend 
and friends were what I needed. And I also found out that in spite of a lot of the things I've done in the past, a lot of people in Mid-South still wanted to see me come back and wrestle again. Uh, and I can't think of a better way of coming back than coming back with my partner who stood by me, regaining the Mid-South Tag Team titles. And in 1986, I'll say this, Doc and I are going to try to be your champions. Well, quite obviously the fans are in total agreement. And one other thing, Lillman, that I want to touch on is recently in Lake Charles, Louisiana, Steve Dr. Death Williams was in his automobile and he came upon a tragic automobile accident that cost two people their lives. There was also another person in the automobile that and according to the state police reports and the newspaper articles that we have on this situation, Dr. Destee Williams tore the door off the hinges and pulled a man from the back seat of the car, saving his life. It's made big news in the state of Louisiana. And I tell you what, that's an all-American effort from someone that we're all very proud of for that particular gesture. Well, Jim Ross, I'd like to say something that, like Ted said, that, you know, we've gone through uh, a few changes here in the past few months. I'd like to tell you people something. I go up and down that highway every night. I'd like to say one thing to all you people. Well, your dry store, the convenience store, wherever, please buckle up. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is tremendous to have the new Mid-South Tag Team Champions back with us, and you will see them in action right after this. Time limit, one fall, 10 minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner, J.R. Hogg and Sean O'Reilly. And in the blue corner, Steve Dr. Death Williams. And Ted DiBiase. Called for by referee Tommy Gilbert, collar and elbow, Dr. Death, and Sean O'Reilly. Steve, Dr. Death wins, and Ted DiBiase, former Mid-South Tag Champions, have once again captured the pinnacle of tag team success here in Mid-South. They won it the 26th of December, the second day that DiBiase was high in competition, their first time together as a team in Biloxi, Mississippi, and a rather unusual turn of events. Of course, Ted DiBiase's true goal is to settle a score. A score with Dick Murdoch, his former mentor, his former supporter, the man who helped him get in to, to wrestling. Another member of the football team out of North Texas State University. It's turned out so many outstanding professional athletes. Of course, Dr. Death Steve Williams, four-time all American from Oklahoma University, and now a true hero. You know, many people that have been memorialized, Joe, as heroes, in recent international events have more or less been big and have the choice whether they were going to do anything or not. They were there and they've been put up as heroes. And Dr. Death is one of the true unsung heroes. I mean, when he ripped that car door off, gasoline was shooting 50 feet in the air, ammunition from, from the uh, guns and the uh, hunting paraphernalia in the vehicle was going every which way and he ripped that door off. He and Rob Ricksteiner, that former All-American at Michigan, they ripped a seat out, got two people out alive, that's a hero. I mean, something that, that he had the choice to walk away from or go above and beyond the call of duty because he could have been burned to death or when that car blew up or that ammunition whizzing around. Other people that were there on the scene were rather reluctant and, kind, and did not have the tremendous power to be able to do what Steve Williams did. Steve Dick also came to the realization that uh, he wants everybody to wear their seatbelts from now on, as he said in the, in the first break. Nice single leg by Dick Murdoch. Of course, his coach, Stan Abel. Excuse me, not Murdoch. Doc, uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams is able to be proud of that move. He still uses that good amateur technique. J.R. Hogg. And I'm, that's spelled with two G's, but it certainly fits. Climbs to the edge of the ring, and Tommy Gilbert calls for the break. We got a great card. Perry Jackson up against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer next. Dick Murdoch and an international star, the superstar who came in for Dick Murdoch from Japan. 
is here. Terry Taylor against the Nightmare. That's exciting. Also welcome to Terry Taylor. Hacksaw Butch Reed against Dick Slater. If Reed wins, he gets Dark Journey. He'll have to do his bidding for 30 days, an important match there. And Al Perez and Brent Wayne Sawyer teaming up left. Figure four, Ted DiBiase, and listen to this crowd at the Tulsa Convention Center. Roar their approval, a capacity crowd here. Tremendous victory for the Mid-South Tag Team Champions. Most certainly was. There you have the official decision. Steve Dr. Death Williams and Ted DiBiase. We'll be right back with Perry Jackson against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer after these words for Mid-South. The mass superstar, Doc. He's internationally known, known around the world. He says he's in Mid-South for a reason. He's on a mission but he's not gonna tell anybody. Well, I know you're a mass superstar and I know what your mission is. You're a bounty hunter. You're a man that goes to the highest bidder. You try to end people's career, break their legs, break their necks, and send them their own way. And nobody knows what that's about better than Ted DiBiase, because yes, I've been there. But I've learned a valuable lesson, Dick Murdoch, because of you. Because when I was laying flat on my back, not knowing whether I'd ever wrestle again, because you tried to take my away from me, I found out that money's not everything and you can't buy friends. I want to tell you something, Murdoch. What goes around comes around. And brother, yours is coming around. And Superstar, this is what you got to handle right here. You can see this man right here. He's probably one of the greatest athletes today in the world. Not only a professional wrestler, I'm a superstar. And I called him long distance, asking him to come in here to help me settle one thing. The DiBiase and Dr. Death Steve Williams feud. And I'll guarantee you what, this man right here, Steve Williams, has got more credentials than you've ever thought about having. You know, I don't have to worry about Dick Murdoch. All he wants me to do is keep you out of there, Dr. Death. You picked up a nickname by bumping heads in football. Well, you and I are going to bump heads in the ring. And this man's going to take care of you, DiBiase. No more crying, no more phone calls. When he gets you all by yourself, because, Dr. Death, you're going to be having your hands full with me. You're not going to be involved in the match. It's just going to be Ted and Murdoch. Ladies and gentlemen, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner, Mad Dog, Buzz Sawyer. in the blue corner, Perry Jackson. Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, an explosive, power-packed individual that's just mean, Joel. He's vicious. The master of the dog collar match. He beat Junkyard Dog, of course, some years back in the dog collar match in some vicious battles, and he's reestablished that he is the master of that match. He's explosive, he's vicious, he's powerful. He asks no quarter and he gives none. Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. He's a great athlete for sure. And I, you know, one thing about him, I never see him run out of gas. He is in tremendous physical conditioning. He, and he's so relentless. He's low center of gravity, he weighs about pounds. Of course, those boots he's got on must fit his personality. Our pleasure again to be here at the beautiful Tulsa Assembly Center downtown. Tremendous crowd. We have some great bouts. We've got Dick Murdoch and the mass superstar and international star who was wrestling with Dick Murdoch in Japan. And Murdoch has brought him here. And we're going to interview him about power slam. Sorry with that power slam and a two-handed lateral press. That's all it took to get the freak out. Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, the winner of this match. Wait a minute. That's the thing about Sawyer. He doesn't care. Victories don't care anything about it. He just wants to hurt people. A person like that is so unpredictable. Carl Fergie tried to pull him off. He already beat Perry Jackson and had him totally at his mercy and apparently wants to punish him some more. He didn't feel like he punished him enough. This man has no regard for his own personal safety. Much like Hacksaw Jim, the man he's been so involved with in a very emotional situation that's centered around Jim Duggan's girlfriend. Wait a minute. Sawyer's on the top rope. Oh, man. He just annihilated Perry Jackson. Carl Fergie is, is trying to get Buzz Sawyer out of there. I don't know if one man can do it or not. Oh, no. I don't know what's wrong with Sawyer. Perry Jackson 
Well, Carl Fergie should stick to by disqualification. Well, this, we'll hope that matchmaker Grizzly Smith gets some people down there and gets this thing under control. Carl Fergie. We'll be right back. Dick Murdoch and the Mass Superstar tag team action right after this. At this time, the team you'll see in action in just a few moments, Dick Murdoch and his partner, the mass superstar, a man that has one of the most renowned international reputations in all of professional wrestling. We wanted to take this particular time to hear a few comments from the mass superstar about why you are in the Mid-South area. All you do, all you have to do is look around in a jam-packed arena. I've traveled all over the world, as you said, Japan, the Middle East, the Far East, North and South America, and Europe. Every place I go, it's amazing because people say, you know, it's an old cliche, the best competition is here. I didn't realize that until I showed up last evening and I looked around. You've got a man right here who's world renowned as I am. Of course, you've got a few bad apples. They're down at the bottom of the barrel and they're spoiling the whole crop. They always cry, they always, they always make excuses. They have to realize that sometimes, fellas, it's time to move on. 1986 is the new year, everybody makes resolutions. I told my good friend, Mr. Murdoch, I'm gonna make a resolution. I'm gonna come to the Mid-South area and I'm gonna be a janitor. I'm gonna clean all the trash out of the wrestling area. I'm gonna let him get done what he has to get done. He's got some major objectives. Nobody's gonna stand in Dick Murdoch's way because I'm gonna take care of all that garbage. All he has to do is focus his attention this entire year of 1986 on his goals. I've got my purpose. He certainly has his. Cougars, you can tell this is a typical Oklahoma crowd. Why don't you shut up? team you have heard from in the red corner, the team of Dick Murdoch and the masked superstar. Their opponents in this contest, in the blue corner, the team of Tommy Wright and Steve Dahl. Now Dick Murdoch wastes no time in the masked superstar. And of course, you heard his comments, you heard Dick Murdoch's comments, Joel. They take right in to Tommy Wright and Steve Dahl. And of course, the crowd is very disapproving of their tactics and their attitude. I wonder what, what exactly they meant by saying that they were going to clean up the Mid-South area. Uh, with their appearance, I kind of feel like it might have been dirtied up. And Murdoch, of course, back from a 45-day suspension. He's found himself a partner. Well, sure I don't that think they're there's any doubt as who they're aiming their comments against. That's DiBiase and Dr. Death. But let me tell you, you better get an all-day lunch with you when you go to clean up those two, because it's quite a job. Reverse neck breaker, mass superstar. Whoa, I've seen him pin a lot of people with that move, but he yanked Tommy right up by the head. He's obviously trying to prove a point. Well, Dick Murdoch is just tough. He's as tough as they come. He has no quarter and gives none. He's a rugged guy. This feud with Ted DiBiase could be reminiscent of the time when he had killer Carl Cox. Because Dick Murdoch is like a pit bulldog. When he gets something in his craw and gets a hold of you, he's never going to let go. And right or wrong never enters into his mind. It's just what he feels he has to do. There he's got that Tommy Wright on Buster. He nailed him with it. <laughs> One, two, and three. Every time he Gilbert call it for the bell. No matter, Dick Murdoch and the superstar. And Joel will be right back with Terry Taylor, and we hope to give him a great welcome against the former North American champion, the Nightmare, after these words from Mid South.
think where uh, Brett Sawyer's parents went wrong, you know? They raised a good son and a mad dog, and then they turned out somebody like Brett Sawyer? That's right, Sawyer. You know, for a little bit, I might be worried with the name Sawyer, because after seeing what the mad dog Buzz Sawyer's done to a lot of wrestlers in this area. But, you know, after seeing Brett Sawyer and knowing the top of many is, I'm not worried at all, because I will step in the ring and show all the people that hot stuff Eddie Gilbert I uh, saw you're down, and it will be you, Brett Sawyer. I don't know if you're going to come in here and try to try to say that your brother's doing things wrong, that you can do it the right way. Well, you try your best to do it the right way to hot stuff, and I'm going to show you the right way, and it's hot stuff's way, brother. And Sir Oliver, you'll be there, and we're going to take Brett Sawyer out before he even gets started in Mid-South. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this match, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner, the Nightmare, along with his manager, Sir Oliver Humperdinck. And introducing in the blue corner, Terry Taylor! Let's call for Carl Berkey in the ring as Terry Taylor squares up against a nightmare. A man that with Ric Flair helped drop Terry Taylor of the North American title. And Terry has a lot of emotion involved in this rematch as he gets his chance against the nightmare right here on Mid-South Television which, by the way, looks like in 1986, due to the expansion of Mid-South television syndication, we're going to be coming into a lot of new markets, and the fans in all those markets are going to be getting acquainted with us. We just joined Amarillo, Atlanta, Dallas, Texas, Laredo, Lawton, Mobile, Memphis, Tyler, Texas, and Wichita, Kansas, and the new markets have just come aboard. And welcome for many more. We want to say howdy to everybody that hasn't got to see Mid-South. The tremendous excitement and this caliber of competition right here on television. These main event caliber matches. And Terry Taylor is like almost a mild-mannered Clark Kent when you see him in his street clothes. But he's got that heart of a champion. And that's why he captures these people. They love him because he's the kind of guy that goes out and gives you full board, 100% competition that he's all. He's generally the smaller man in the ring than his opponent, but he's got the skills, the technical skills, the conditioning, and the desire. Taylor's a master with pinning holds, and he can catch you in just about any situation. I think that's one thing that gives him the edge against a lot of bigger men, like the Nightmare. Nightmare really laying in those. Oh, yeah, he's 300 pounds, Joel. He's powered. And you can see that forearm smash right over Terry Taylor's heart on the backside. That's what takes so much out of a wrestler. This is a fantastic crowd again here. Oh, uh, the nightmare hesitated for just that split second. And the quickness of Terry Taylor, he's such a quick thinker in the ring. Oh, he's adapting. You have to be when you're his side. You've got to go. You can't go power to power against these guys. You've got to have change of pace, explosiveness, and tactics. Joel, I saw right before we went on here in the crowd today, Congressman Jim Jones and his two sons, Jeff and Abe here. It's great to have them back. You know, oftentimes people say a wrestling crowd is stereotyped. You just get, got to get to know these people. There's a lot of fantastic, wonderful people here at these bouts. And if you're enjoying them at home on TV, it's nothing like it is at live and in person at your arena. No doubt about it. Terry Taylor pulling the nightmare back up. He's trying to take him to the ropes, but it looked like the Nightmare raked the eyes. Well, the Nightmare, especially with Sir Oliver Humperdinck in his corner, Nightmare going up. Get that 300 pounds going, but Terry Taylor gut shots him. Terry using a little psychology of his own, saying, telling the referee the Nightmare is pulling his hair. When the referee went back there, Terry socked him one on the jaw. Now they're toe to toe, which Terry really doesn't stand toe to toe with somebody. He's too smart, but he, I think he's smart, but he's broke through the nightmare. And I think this match has so much emotion because this was a guy that was Ric Flair, the North American title from Terry, and he is really incensed about it. And that's one of the reasons he's back in the Mid-South area. Oh, what a ball. And look at this crowd. They love it. Terry Taylor. Please, the fans here in Tulsa are to have Terry back. A great victory for Terry Taylor. We'll be right back with Hacksaw Butch Reed against Dick Slater. There's a very special stipulation.
the superstation trying to be a big shot. Hey, brother, I've been to the superstation, too. I have to come nowhere and try to be a big shot to nobody. What I like about you, Terry Taylor, you got your name signed on the matter, on the dotted line. You got me excited, too. You got your name signed there. Signed down there. I can't even talk. I'm so happy. But what's it going to be like? When I take that pretty head of hair and I take them pretty little eyes of yours and I stick them down in the mat and I start rubbing them out in all the little grills and ringside. Start going, Terry Taylor, Terry Taylor, my idol, my hero. I ain't in there to make it look pretty. I'm in there to do some harm. Come on, Terry Taylor. I'd like to say a very special hello to all my friends back in the Mid-South area. And yes, I'm back and I'm back home to stay. I appreciate all the cards and letters. People saying, please come back, it's just not the same. And I wasn't the same without you, and I appreciate you all sending your love and your letters. And if I ever needed your support, I'm going to against this guy, Buzz Sawyer. Everybody knows what the mad dog can do, but they never know when and when. The guy always has that unpredictable nature about him. He'll do anything to win a match. And the guy is, he's just like, he's crazy. He's got all the physical gifts, and he is very, I tell you, he's a blessed man when it comes to his ability in wrestling, but the guy just up here, maybe it's a little bit short. So sorry, when I go into the ring against you, I know that you're gonna do anything. So I'm going to be armed with that knowledge, and I'll do exactly the same thing. The people have seen me. I've never backed down from a fight. So if you want to wrestle, we'll wrestle. If you want to fight, we'll do it all night long. We're going to show you a match that took place between Dick Slater and Hacksaw Butch Reed. At the time this match took place, Hacksaw Butch Reed was the North American heavyweight champion. This was a non-title match, but at stake was Dick Slater's manager, Dark Journey. If Reed wins this match, he gets 30 days that Dark Journey must be his manager, and that's gonna be a tremendous insult to Dick Slater. And so a lot riding on the match, but since this match has taken place, Dick Slater has captured the North American title. Now, Dick Slater, told you through the weeks, is one of the most highly regarded, highly rated stars in professional wrestling today. He has made a name for himself throughout the entire wrestling world, and he has come to the Mid-South area and plans to do the same, and he has been able to back up what he's been bragging about. He is now the North American Heavyweight Champion. That puts in the kingpin in the Mid-South area, but he will have to defend that title for the first time in Houston Wrestling, Friday, January 24th at the Sam Houston Coliseum. That's Fan Appreciation Night. That's the same night that you are going to be able to buy a general admission balcony ticket for only four dollars now the ringside and arena tickets will be the regular price but the general admission will be only four dollars and that's a good shot of dark journey you can bet she's going to be in dick slater's corner on friday january 24th because dick slater is going to have to defend his title against a man with the ddt jake roberts and that's one of nine matches that night that will also include the dangerous, explosive bunkhouse battle royal that will be the final event of the evening. And a bunkhouse battle royal means all wrestlers enter the ring wearing what they want. Whatever they're wearing, they can use to win the battle royal. And when you have 22 wrestlers battling in that type of situation for $25,000, you can see why officials are expecting maybe the most exciting, explosive moments of this 1986 wrestling season. It will take place that same night that you see Dick Slater, the new North American Airway champion, defend his title and belt against Jake the Snake Roberts along with eight other matches. Reed doing the moving. Slater was the man with the elbow and Dick Slater can come at you with his, his feet, his legs, his arms, his elbows, but he's also against a man who has proven that he is one of the professional wrestling and Hacksaw Butch Reed and Reed used that atomic drop along with that right by that big suit foam hand of his. And Reed is a well-conditioned athlete. We've seen Reed in the gym before here on Houston Wrestling where he has bench pressed over 550 pounds, not just once, but with repetition. He has a lot of raw, raw strength. And he is one man who has been smart enough and good enough to incorporate that strong, strength of his into a well-balanced wrestling attack. We've had a lot of men in wrestling who have been extremely strong, but Reed is one of those few that have been able to use that strength as just one of many assets into his wrestling game. But Dick Slater, a man who's held countless titles, man who has been rated as number one contender to the world title in more than one 
situation. He's got a unique style. Probably one of the reasons he's got so many nicknames. They call him Unpredictable Dick Slater, Mr. Electricity. There's a lot of other adjectives that wrestling fans have come up with for Dick Slater. But one adjective you better put in there is tough and rugged and because Dick Slater's all those and he is now flirting with trouble if he's going to rile the temper of Axel Butch Reed. Your referee for this match is Tommy Gilbert. My name is Peter Burkholz and I do want to urge you to get your tickets early for that fan appreciation night because that's Houston Wrestling's way of saying thank you for your support. Not only at the arena but for making Houston Wrestling on Channel 39 the number one TV show we, this is our way of saying thank you by bringing the top stars in wrestling on a tremendous card and providing you and your family and your friends a tremendous night of wrestling action. So Dark Journey now, she's happy. She has a lot riding on this match. She does not look forward to the possibility of having to be under the guidance of Hacksaw Butch Reed for 30 days. She likes her man Dick Slater and she likes the way that he's been climbing to the top they have been a controversial pair, but nevertheless, they have not been able to been, be stopped by anybody. And talking about being stopped, Hacksaw Butch Reed's face was stopped by that metal ringside barricade. As we see Reed down on the floor, feeling the effects of this attack by Dick Slater. Dick Slater, regardless of how he comes out with his North American title match against Jake the Snake Roberts, will be in that bunkhouse battle royal. So will Jake the Snake Roberts. Dark Journey at this time has not been entered in the bunkhouse battle royal. And if she was smart, she would make sure that she is not entered in the coming weeks. But a rip across the eye as Slater now taking full advantage of the referee being out of position, but that's a second nature to someone like Dick Slater who has so much wrestling ability and experience that he can just feel where that referee is in that ring without even looking and be able to use whatever tactics he feels is appropriate to win. Because of Dick Slater, Dick Slater is much like the Al Davis of professional football. He just wins, baby. He is a character, but also a man that when he gets inside the ring is extremely tough to handle. He's trying to keep Reed's shoulders to the mat, but he was using that bottom rope because when you try to keep Reed's powerful shoulders to the mat, you better look for every ounce of help you can get, and that's what Slater was trying to do by increasing his leverage. We joined this match in progress. It was about roughly 10 minutes deep into the match, and you saw Dark Journey slap Butch Reed. She's trying to do anything to keep Reed's concentration away from beating Slater. And it may have backfired. Dark Journey's enthusiastic support may have triggered Butch Reed into action. And that could be a serious mistake for Slater. And also a serious mistake the next 30 days for Dark Journey. A flying clothesline. And look at the fans standing now and cheering as they are sensing victory they feel that reed's close he's close but so is slater close to those ropes gilbert called for the break but you can see the hacksaw he had a few things to discuss with slater before he broke the hole and dark journey now from a face that was filled with confidence is now a face filled with concern and as reed getting close going for that figure four is Slater trying to block it? If it's applied, it's going to be bad news for Slater. He's got the leg hit, held in position. He hasn't been able to, he hasn't allowed Butch Reed, rather, to come down and apply the pressure that is needed on that cross leg. You can see a beautiful shot of it, how Reed just inches away from completing the hold, a hold that, if it is completed, could end this match. Gilbert firing the question to Slater. Uh, Slater is still in the effects of the hold, even though Reed hasn't been able to fully apply it. As Slater, with his wrestling knowledge, has been able to block it from being 100% applied because this hold, when fully applied, doesn't give the man very long, very much chance of breaking out of it. So the ropes, and that's kind of cutting it close. Tommy Gilbert 
cutting, taking that hold because Slater's hand was on the bottom rope. And now Reed, knowing that he's got Slater's leg hurt, knowing that he can now start to work on other parts of Slater because Reed is concerned with one thing, the overall match. And when you get to the caliber of someone like Hacksaw Butch Reed or Dick Slater, you enjoy watching them wrestle because they have a strategy and they want to wear down their opponents. They don't go for the quick pins. They know that in order to pin Dickie Slater, you're gonna have to wear him down. And that's exactly what Butch Reed is doing now as Slater draped across those ropes. Reed is aiming and firing away at that target. And he asked for permission from the fans of the Coliseum, the home of Houston Wrestling, and they surely give it to him. Do want to remind you that fan of tonight will be January 24th. That night only will be the night that you can get the general admission balcony tickets for only $4 a piece while they last. And we do urge you to get your tickets early for that night. Good move by Slater. He, as Reed tried to catch him off the ropes, he went into that neck snapper. Both men hit the mat, but it's been able to allow Slater to somewhat neutralize the attack by Reed, giving Slater just a few precious seconds to start to recuperate. And as he walks towards Reed, you can see Reed still groggy. He's going for the pile driver. He's got Reed up in the air. Reed blocks it and reversed it. And that takes a lot of strength. It also takes a lot of know-how to be able to block Slater from going to that pile driver. So both men in this particular match have shown their ability. They've shown their knowledge and they've shown wrestling fans why they're best in the professional ranks today. A pile driver by Reed as he drove Slater's head into the mat. And Slater, halfway out of the ring, halfway in, Reed doesn't care. He has a job to do, and that is to continue his assault on Slater. You see Dark Journey in the background trying to encourage Slater to make sure he doesn't give up because she's what's at stake in this particular match. I mentioned before, it is a non-title match, but since this match, Slater has captured the North American title. And he will have to defend it against Jake the Snake on Fan Appreciation Night, Friday, January 24th at the Coliseum. But right now, Slater, using those ropes, we've got a three count. Tommy Gilbert did not see that Dick Slater was using the bottom ropes. And so as Dick Slater, confident now that he's the winner style, and you see Dark Journey, they know they better get out of that ringside and fast. Fans are protesting. The referee now, let's hear what the referee Slater, has to say. Slater, you better get Joe Fanner back in the ring, baby, because this match is not over. Thank you. So in a rare decision, the referee has decided that the match in, is indeed still in progress, and he has ordered Slater back into the ring. And Hacksaw Butch Reed and the thousands of Houston Wrestling fans were elated with this decision as the referee saw enough evidence that he was convinced that Slater did use the ropes, has ordered this match to be continued, and much to the delight of the fans at the Hacksaw Butch Reed, and much to the disappointment of Dick Slater. You can tell by the look on his face, he does not relish getting back in the ring with Hacksaw Butch Reed. Dark Journey, she's not very happy either. They thought that they had pulled it off. Reed, let loose with some of that frustration that he just felt seconds ago when he thought that he had almost lost the match due to some trickery by Slater. And Reed now wants to take full advantage of this match since the ordered continuation by